All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this construction here behind me is a bird watching tower. At Regua, we frequently get people who are into bird watching. However, tonight I have special plans for this tower, you see, because um, I am looking to attract insects. And I thought it would be an interesting idea to use the tower and replace the lamp on top with a mercury vapor light bulb and see if it attracts any special species of insects. Effectively turning the whole thing into a moth trap. That would be interesting. I study butterflies and moths for a living. That's why I'm here in Brazil. All the insects I catch are filmed for educational value. They are not harmed. I release all of them. See, here it goes. Bye bye, friend. So don't complain, ya bunch of hippies. The insect is unharmed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've made myself a clever contraption. Using here the power cable that's coming here from the house behind me. Let's turn it around and follow the cable here. Alright, so here I'm currently in Brazil going to study moths. And I put a power cable here from the house all the way over to the watchtower. And as you can see on top, it has a special light bulb. A mercury vapor light. Let's follow the cable. Let's see how what I've made. Had to put up some work to set this up. Cable goes down here, down the hill. Oh, this is a bit. Let's hope I don't fall. A bit steep following the cable. <coughs> so only thing I have to do is put up this sheet. There you go. So into the bird watching tower. If you come to Regua, we have many bird watching towers for bird watchers. So we can photograph wildlife. But today I decided to make better use of the tower and turn it into an insect trap. Let's see if it works. Oop. Oh. Ah, that's a beautiful view here, isn't it? From the tower. Look at those mountains. Is that not fantastic? I love nature. Nice sunrise in Brazil. Oh, look at all the rainforest. So the light here, in my opinion, could attract insects from here, from the hills, because it reaches so far, because it's on top of a tower. For the next part, we need some really amateurish improvisation. By placing a cable here, maybe. Um, let's put a crate here. And then let's put the cable under it. Why? I'll show you why in a few seconds. All right, so the next part requires a little bit of amateurish improvisation by putting a cable over the ledge. Um, all right, so the next part requires a stupid level of improvisation by putting a cable around here. Because I'm going to use the cable as a rope. Why? I'll show you that later. This is not optimal, but it will work because the location is awesome. So, rest of the cable I just tie it here around the ledge, I guess. Creating this tight area. There you go. Let's see if this works. Probably not. Oh my god! Ridiculous. Now people, to successfully capture rare insects, you need a white sheet, a white surface below the light. 
because the white surface will reflect more white light and make your trap more efficient. And second of all, it gives the insect a place to land. Instead of swarming around the light bulb, they will fall into the sheet and stop. See that? However, I, I confess the way I put this up, it's so stupid and unprofessional. Look at this, it's dumb. Unfortunately, I didn't really see another way to put it up. Honestly, next time I should take some rope so I can hang up the sheet properly. Here I just used a bench through the white sheet over the bench that I put against the wall, put the sheet over it, used the other end to tie an electricity cable I didn't need and used the cable here. This is a very dumb setup, but you know what? Such a dumb setup. It's probably going to attract a little bit less insect than normal. But I think this perfect location will compensate for my bad setup, you know? If you fish with a very crappy fishing rod in a pond that's filled with fish, you're still going to get a good result. And if you use a very crappy mole strap in a perfect location, I think it will still work. So I think here on top of this tower, what we what are sitting at right now, I think the light here that is so high is going to attract so many insects from the surrounding. It doesn't matter if the trap is a little bit amateurish and stupid today. I think it's still gonna work regardless. Well, the light... At least the light is shining and reflecting here on this sheet. That's a good sign you want this reflection of this white surface. And everything here in these mountains, I don't know from how far away insects can be attracted, but I think it can be from very far away in some cases, so this should give a very cool insight. Now here we have trees, so this is the canopy of the trees, this is the canopy of the forest. It's like 70 meters high, so that's how high the trees here can be. I don't think it's 70 meters, maybe it's more like 10 meters high, maybe even less, who cares, who knows, I'm not gonna measure it, but um, this should be such an interesting place to try. insect alone. Why trap them? Well, it's for research. You see, when I started this channel many years ago, it was been a lifelong dream to con contribute to the conservation of insects in the wild. It's very sad that insects are threatened and declining. Insects are one of the most important animals for our ecosystem and our environment. I'm currently in the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil, which is one of the world's most deforested rainforests as well. And I'm here to see what kind of insects survive here, especially the moths. My specialism is in moths. And I want to make a checklist of the local Saturnidae, for example. Uh, the silk moth species here, but maybe we can also look at sphingid, arctid, tiger moth. Maybe some interesting arabids. Everything that I found interesting, I wrote it, I write it down. I collect it as data on my computer, on an external hard drive. I bring it, bring it back to the Netherlands. And these results I share with professional entomologists who are working here for 12 years and are mentoring me. And um, yeah, I also want to say that this is one I wanted to do all my life. But the reason I never did it is because I couldn't afford it. And it's because of my YouTube subscribers that I'm here. You know who you are. But there's a few of my fans on YouTube who paid this whole trip for me, including the flight tickets, my stay here. So I have a few super fans who are paying everything for me to go to Brazil. And that's crazy because I wouldn't be able to afford it myself. My channel is 100% demonetized by YouTube, so I don't make money from any of my videos. And people like this supporting me is the only support that I have. 
And it makes me very grateful that I can make a difference for nature and the environment, that I can here go to Regua in Brazil, talk about nature, show you the rare and cool insect here, make videos about them. This is what I want to be in my life, you know, somebody who at least educates people online about insects, about biodiversity, inspires more people to like and study and appreciate insects because they need so much more attention. You know, insects are in danger, they need help. And I'm happy that what I do here, my study, my research, will help the checklist of local species, will help inspire people on YouTube who watch my videos to do the same. I know there's a lot of bug keepers who watch my videos. I think it's very important if you want to do something with entomology, is please go into nature. Go in nature and observe, okay? Don't just breed animal in captivity. I mean, I love breeding moths. I promote uh, the, the pet trade, the moth breeding hobby a lot. But I don't think it's a good way to get expertise, you know? Uh, seeing animals in plastic boxes from foreign countries, in the, if you live in Europe or the United States, it's not going to give you real expertise. If you want to be an entomologist, you have to work in nature, right? Like there's, there's no moth or butterfly experts who just breed insects. Like you have to actually go into nature and get that expertise. Oh great, there's a fly here trying to sting me and drink my blood. Dead. Who said I wouldn't harm a fly? I just killed a fly. The stinging flies here are really bad, though. Well, let's get to, let's check back a few lays, hours later when it's dark. I'm gonna grab some dinner. Come back when the sun has gone down. See if there's insects coming to this place. So that should be fantastic. Fantastic. I'm excited to see if anything rare will show up for my research. Beautiful. Moth trapping is kind of like fishing. You never know what you're gonna get. Some days you'll be empty handed and catch nothing and you'll be disappointed. And other days you just hit the jackpot and you'll find giant or rare species that people rarely have photographed. Try moth trapping people if you're watching this on YouTube. All you need is a mercury vapor light bulb, electricity and a white sheet. Put it up, put a white sheet under the light bulb, make sure there's, it cannot get wet because of the rain and just check back there at night and see what comes to the light. Using the correct kind of light bulb is very important. Moths don't care about red or green. You need a UV light or something that at least emits a lot of ultraviolet spectrum light because that's what mainly attracts insects. Insects are mainly attracted to blue, green and especially ultraviolet. So mercury vapor light bulb is really one of the best for entomology. Hmm. Darkness. It's dark outside. Perfect. It's 8 o'clock, um, sun has gone down, it's still a bit early, I don't expect to see many moths yet, but we can take a first look. So let's go, check it out. The people, as you can see it's early at night, but it's not too early. It's... God, I'm trying to have my flashlight. 
It's early, but it's late enough to have cool moths. I guess we'll just see about that then, eh? All right, folks, so we do have the first stuff coming in. Nothing too big yet, but hey, small things can be interesting. So one of the things I notice is an um, aquatic beetle. That's interesting. We have the first Saturnid moth here. It's a Hilesia male, probably Hilesia nigricans. You go crazy if you touch them. Huh. Oh wait. I think this is a female, isn't it? Oh, I think it's I think we got a female actually in that case. I'm happy because female Saturnids are hard to come by. I've had hundreds of Helasia males so far, but no females. Okay, that's a good start. That's definitely a start. It appears that uh, some of the moths also want to settle on the rails of the tower. Such as this very common Automerus melanops. Alright, yeah, so I do notice a lot of the large moths like to settle on the concrete instead of on the light sheet. I guess that's because my sheet is a little bit crappy. But it's fine. Should make for an interesting setup. Let's see. You just know that you are moth trapping in the lowlands when you find Automeres melanops. While I never see them on high altitudes, I pretty much always find them in the lower altitudes or in the lowlands. Yeah, this species is ultra common and I filmed it so many times, it's better to just quickly admire it and move on. There's no doubt you'll see them many times in my videos, both in the past and in the future. They're very cute though. Also interesting is the arrival of this particular group of grasshoppers because all of them are the same species, sitting in the same area. I wonder if these grasshoppers are social. Because in this occasion it's definitely not a coincidence that four of them have gathered in one place. That my friends is not a coincidence. These must be some kind of social grasshopper or locust. This is actually quite interesting because I've never seen this before. And it's so obvious to me that uh, ignore the big fly that just landed, I think it's even a stinging horsefly. It's so interesting that all of them seem to be in some kind of group. Yeah. Actually that's very interesting. I'm going to write down this observation. I don't study grasshoppers or Katie did, but it's definitely... Oh, this uh, big ant just scared one of them away. What's happening here? Oh, I just got a kick. Oh my god. Can you see it? For a second an enormous hog moth showed up, but it's gone. Now we have some kind of a mole cricket. Highly interesting. Did you see it?
What's this tiny little hawk moth? Oh, that's so cute. Today we are moth trapping in the lowlands. So we expect to see different videos than in my previous videos. The mountains and lowlands have different species. It's all about the altitude. This cute little buddy could be Enyo Occupate. It has a large distribution from the southern United States all the way into the Neotropics. The larvae can actually feed on many plants from the Vitacea and Dylanaceae plant families. So this cute little hawk moth species is built like a fighter jet. It also has two large adorable round eyes. <laughs> what a fantastic little beast. Oh, this is nice. A really cute little lanternfly. So beautiful, I like these kind of insects a lot. Whoa. And it's gone. They just teleport. Alright. Early verdict so far. Mm, I'm gonna be honest. The night is still young, but I was kinda hoping for more. It's it's looking starting to look like a kind of a mediocre night. We did get some cool hawk moths, I suppose. Some of the common outer mirrors. Um, that's it so far, though. Hmm. Hoping for a little bit more tonight. Fingers crossed, I suppose. Anything can still happen. I think I'm gonna go back to my house, come back here in a few hours and see if more cool stuff have arrived. Who knows? Who knows? One of the things that is making the trap less effective is the fact that the moon is out tonight. Moth trappers know that the more moonlight there is, the less moths you attract. Alright. Time to check back in a few hours. I'm not gonna sit here all night. Maybe something good will arrive tonight. Ah, focused. This is Bart Coppens late at night. It's uh, three o'clock and I haven't checked the trap in a while, but I'm going to right now because I'm very curious um, if my innovative idea has attracted any special insects or not. Let's take a look. Alright folks, it's late, it's 3 o'clock at night. I'm gonna look at the final result. Is there anything worthwhile here on the trap or not? I guess one thing that we got is a big fat female of uh, the silk moth species Sisphinx molina. Sisphinx molina is extremely common here at Regua. Like I've seen hundreds of Sisphinx molina at this point. So this is basically one of the really common stuff. So they do have nice red eye spots though. It's um, a little bit exciting, but not super exciting because I've seen so many of these. Ah, I have encountered these many times. This Saturnid is frequently seen in the natural reserve of Regua. They have cool red colors on their wings too. We encountered them many times in my moth trapping videos, didn't we? That's why I won't go into detail about their biology this time, because we've done it several times already. But I do have one cool update. I am raising them in captivity right now. These are the caterpillars of Sisphinx Molina being grown in the laboratory. These funky moths are not difficult to breed it seems. Maybe one day there will be a life cycle video. Okay, this is interesting on the uh, pillar. I suppose we find a... It's gonna fly away now. But this was a Copaxa. Well, let's film it before chasing it away. This is also a common species of Saturnidae. Now, 
but it's not as common as this thing's Molina. This Copaxa species I've seen, I think, about six times in one and a half months' time. It's not like a rarity, it's also not super common. Well, but it is one of the more common types of Saturnia that you'll see here. Typically the, the caterpillars of Copaxa moth, they feed on laurel, laurel family, Lauraceae trees. Including but not limited to Persia or Avocado, but also others in this family. So it's funny. This seems to be a lowland species because when I moth trap in the mountains I don't really get this species very much. But it's cool to see. And here there is a nice hog moth. But it seems kind of weak and sluggish for some reason. I wonder if something is wrong with it. Look at the movements of this hog moth, it's not normal. It looks very weak. Almost as if it's almost dying. I don't understand why. It looks fine, it doesn't look damaged, but it's just a very sickly, weak looking moth. I wonder what happened to it. Hmm. Something seems wrong with this hawk moth, sadly. Remember when I found it, it seemed a little bit sick or injured. But despite that, it's a good opportunity to make a close-up. It's still a great species. I think this species is Manduca lefeburi. I think it is found from Mexico, Belize, Nicaragua and Costa Rica to Venezuela, Bolivia, Paraguay and Brazil. It seems to have multiple subspecies as well. Interestingly, believe it or not, it seems that this species of Manduca feeds on wild relatives of willow tree in the rainforest. Or in this case, Caseria from the Salisacea family. I think this is my favorite Manduca species so far in Brazil. It is truly a gorgeous insect. Today in Brazil I found something really awesome. A type of fruit piercing moth. That's right, this species, while common in Asia, can also be found in South America. I, this is Bart Coppens, your favorite online entomologist, and I document butterflies and moths in the Brazilian Atlantic rainforest on social media. And today I found a fruit piercing moth. Let me tell you all about this fascinating creature. Because you sure want to know more, don't you? Wait, what? Fruit piercing moths in Southeast Brazil? Yeah, that's right. These are in South America too. And this one right here is Eudacima Procus. This species should be present in Suriname, Colombia, Peru, Brazil and Paraguay. Fruit piercing moths appear to be pantropical. This means they are present in all the tropical regions in the world. Yeah, that's right. Africa, Asia, Australia, South America. Isn't that awesome? They use their extremely sharp proboscis to pierce the skin of fruits and then drink the fresh juice right out of them. What a survival strategy. They also have brightly colored hind wings most of the time. They are not exactly rare. In South America they have been an uncommon encounter so far. Now this is small but this is interesting. It doesn't look very peculiar. But it's something I haven't seen before and that's what I'm after. I'm after moths I haven't seen before. In fact, I don't really know the species name. But I'll try to identify it online. And when I learn the name, I'll write it here in the commentary anyway. So you get to see the name. Actually, I think I recognize it now. This golden bronze species of Nautodontid is Rifargia apella. I've encountered them many times at this point. Sadly not too much is known about them, but at least they have a name for this very shiny insect. Oh, 
Ah, this is a Saturni day. Hilesia. Now the Saturni day here can get very small. And Hilesia in particular are classified as pests. They can be major defoliators. Not to mention they have toxic larvae, so people are usually not happy with infestations of Hilesia. But they are part of life, they are part of the ecosystem and they are important. You bye bye my Hilesia friend. Uh, here we see an awesome Dischema. Tiger moth. It's not a complete match, but it's definitely the best match I could find. I think this one is the Schema Eurocilia. The Schema are probably my, what, some of my favorite tiger moths. They come in many colors, sizes and shapes. And this one is a bit old and tattered and lost some of its color, but it's still a nice tiger moth with orange hind wings. Great! Some sort of a giant bee. Um, careful with this one I don't know if you guys have seen all my videos in the Brazil entomology series but in one particular night I attracted a lot of wasps and I got stung six times in one night by wasps and even one of these things happened on camera so if you want to see me scream in pain go watch that video it's the Novo Friburgo episode so I learned from that experience, I'm not going to mess with any type of wasp or bee in the rainforest and this one is particularly large and angry. Well, I don't know if it's angry, hope not. Wow, it's beautiful though, it looks like some kind of giant bumblebee. What, it's so really big, eh? I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit scared of it. Especially after my bad experience with wasps, I feel more scared of bees and wasps. I felt what they're capable of and I am less happy to be close to them right now. Wow, this moth is really shiny. Look at that. It has metallic stripes. Let me tell you more about it. Usually I don't give geometrids much attention because my specialism is more in the Saturnidae or the Emperor Moths. But in this video I try to document more small things too and some of them are really pretty. I suspect this species could be Frigonis polita. It's hard to say for sure though since there are many species of Frigonis. Hmm, either way, the scales of this little moth shimmer brightly with silver. Can you see it? It has metallic stripes, it's amazing if you ask me. Yeah, Erinus Ello is honestly everywhere. They are an agricultural pest on cassava crops. It's no surprise I encounter them every day. The numbers are very high due to cassava plantations in the neighborhood. Once again, it's the Ello Sphinx. Another species I film so many times, I see them literally every day. Despite that, they are definitely cute with their striped abdomens and orange hind wings. Hey now, would you look at that? Can you see it? It's another Copaxa. Even though it's sitting in a weird spot here in the corner. Oh, let's scare it away and see if it lands. Well, whoop, there you go. Got you in my net. So the light here attracts moths. But the moths here attract other guests. 
So this is actually a moth from the genus Periga, a Saturnid moth that I kind of wanted for my research. However, it looks like someone else has gotten to my moth first. I know what you guys are saying, Bart, please rescue it. Rescue the poor moth. I'm sorry. It's probably already too late. Second of all, I'm not going to stick my hands in a random giant spider in the rainforest. Actually, I think this is a harmless spider. It's probably a Nephilengus. Nephilengus cruentata, maybe. Despite that, you know, the moth has been claimed. I'm not go going to fight a spider over a freaking moth that it has in its web. Clearly, however, I'm in the domain of wild animals and I am in the home of nature. I'm in the jungle where the rules of the jungle apply. And life feeds on life, as you can see. Oh, here we can get a good look at the spider, I think. It's going to reveal itself. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of spider this is. Nephila, Nephilengis. So we have uh, a native orb weaver here. A giant orb weaver that's native. But we also have a bunch of introduced one, including one from Africa even. I'm not much of a spider expert though. What do you guys think? What kind of spider is it? Nephilengis cruentata? Immature one? I don't know. It seems to be webbing all around the moth, which was a lovely Saturnidae silk moth, exactly the family that I study, and it's gone. But it's interesting to observe stuff like this happening too. You never know what you're gonna expect to see in a rainforest, eh? See, this is why I need to travel, people. My YouTube channel has so many, so much potential if I was able to travel the world. I've always said this, like, this is just the unusual stuff you don't really see on YouTube that I can film for you. And now I can. It's finally time that I can prove myself and show the cool content that I can show people. It's unusual, eh? Clearly this one is enjoying his dinner very much. Oh yes, that's a Nephilengus. That's a Nephilengus cruentata. So, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? This is uh, Bart Coppens, the sexy moth king. I'm not Bart Coppens, the attractive spider queen. I am a moth specialist, not a spider specialist. But I do believe this is a Nephilengus cruentata, which is actually an introduced species here from Africa. So that's funny. You go all the way to Brazil to see Brazilian wildlife and what you get is African spiders. That makes no sense, right? Introduced species are unfortunately a, a big thing, even in the rainforest of Brazil. So the human influence on the environment is irreversible. I hope the Nephilengus is not a harmful or invasive species, but it's strange to see what I believe is an African spider in Brazil. Now please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Hope I'm not spreading misinformation. Oh, these are such powerful images, eh? Look at the spider now starting to feed on a moth. And what's it doing? It looks like it's... It has wrapped the moth with silk. I think it's almost ready to eat. It's fascinating, isn't it? Life is fascinating, invertebrates are fascinating. You gotta love to see it, don't you? What's the spider doing? It's just securing its prey here extra threads of silk. Look at that. So the spider appears to be carrying the moth. 
back to its retreat. Can you see it? It's actually lifting the moth with a, some threads of silk attached to its legs, I guess. Maybe it's trying to place its food in a safe space. Oh, I think it's done carrying the moth right now. Hmm. Wonder what it's going to do. Are you going to grab it? Yeah, it's it's lifting the moth, see? It's taken the moth. So I guess this spider likes to eat his uh, meal here in a safe safe space. Ah, now it's eating. Now it's eating. Is it? Ow, I just got stung by a huge mosquito. Yep. It's feeding. It's eating alright. Alright, I'm gonna leave the spider alone with its Saturnid Day meal. Such a waste of a good Saturnid moth. But uh, I filmed that species already. This is such a crusty old tower. Yep, there's absolutely no doubt about it. These are Nephilengus cruentatas. Such giant spiders. Look at her markings. <sighs> it's fantastic, huh? What a huge, huge spiders. Although it's its shadow is equally impressive. Look at that. That's like something out of a horror movie, yeah? Whoa. This is a really cool cinematic effect. You should use this for an intro for YouTube or something. Ooh, Halloween. Wow, the spiders here are pretty massive, yo. They've taken over the whole tower. Wow, this appears to be a kleptoparasitic spider. It is possibly Achriodes elevatus. These small spiders hang out in the webs of bigger spiders and then steal their lunch. They are typically associated with species such as orb weavers. Next to it, there seems to be a nest of smaller spiders hatching from their eggs. Ooh, fascinating and spooky. Oh my god. Wow, so what are these enormous spiders then? Disclaimer, please do not handle random spiders in Brazil or any other rainforest unless you know what you are doing. While most of them are harmless, a small number of species can in fact be harmful. Thankfully I recognize these species and understand that while they look big and scary, this species is quite harmless. So what species is it? It's Nephilengus cruentata. A species named Cruentata is derived from Latin cruentus, or bloody, which is probably referring to the female red sternum. This species originates from tropical Africa. Wait, 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 what? Tropical Africa? But Bart, aren't you in Brazil, which is South America? Yeah, that's right. It seems this spider is an introduced species in South America. How? I'm not sure, but it's common for invertebrates to hitchhike on cargo ships, on products such as fruit and hardwood. Sometimes adults, but even egg cases of exotic species are shipped worldwide and escape into the wild. Thankfully, this African species seems to be spreading in South America, but it does not seem to be a very harmful species, thankfully. That being said, any introduction of any exotic species is per definition a bad thing. They're beautiful spiders though, but I have really mixed feelings about this. I wish they weren't introduced here. Oh, now what do we have here? Praying mantis, huh? I'm gonna collect it and then make a close-up. This is an interesting one. Ooh, actually this is a very nice species of mantis. You know what, I'm just gonna take it and make better close-ups of it in my research house because right now the lighting is poor because of the dark conditions but I'm going to carry this mantis with me put it in this cage and then uh, well I already found another mantis so maybe better put it in this cage so they don't cannibalize each other 
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Coppens from the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil. And I found an awesome species of praying mantis. I totally have to talk to you about this species today, let me tell you. This is Cardioptera brachyptera. While males of this species appear common, females are somewhat rarely photographed. This species is found in the general area of the eastern coastline of Brazil, extending a little bit land inwards into rainforest environments. The males can fly very well and come flying to the light trap. They have beautiful shiny wings. It kind of reminds me of a dragonfly. They are long and slender creatures, beautiful. While I'm a moth researcher, this place has a lot to offer for praying mantis researchers. There are many endemic species in this area that we know very little about. Wow, I'm in the rainforest in Brazil, the Atlantic rainforest to be precise. And I found a really tiny, tiny little praying mantis, as small as my fingernail. And because it has wings, we can tell it is already an adult. Have you guys ever seen such a cute little mantis? Let me tell you more about it. What a nice little species. This is an awesome and tiny species of praying mantis, so small. You know what's crazy? Usually I don't even get much mantis during moth trapping, but tonight I have three different species. Could the tower setup be beneficial for catching mantis because it's higher? Who knows? This one is Acontista concina. Again, it seems to be endemic to the Atlantic rainforest in southeastern Brazil. Even more interestingly, it looks like the nymphs of this species resemble ants. An awesome case of mimicry right there. It's definitely one of the cuter and smallest species of mantis that I have encountered so far. Oh man, I look terrible from this angle. Anyway. Mantis nerds of my channel, do not worry, I am going to make a close-up of these two ultra awesome mantis. But first I'm gonna take them with me and make the close-up in a respectful environment instead of me holding them between my fingers. Have a nice setup and then they will be released back into nature. I do like finding mantises so they're fascinating animals to me. All right, people, what is the verdict so far? Yeah, the result is mixed. First of all, we did get some nice Saturnid moths that I'm happy with, uh, especially the two Copaxa in one night is not bad. Female Sysphinx Molina. Some other stuff that I would say is pretty cool to see. I'm also happy to have mantids. No, I mean, Mantids. I have mantids, not mantids, okay? I mean, I do have mantids. And I have mantids, you know? Anyway, it's about the mantids, not the mantids. Don't confuse them. I am happy to find those. Um, but still, I, I would rate the night maybe a 6 out of 10. I would have hoped for a higher number of moths to show up, honestly. I'm going to be totally honest. 
And tonight I also really didn't see any moth species I haven't seen before. But I guess that's just the result of me being here in Brazil um, for over four weeks, four and a half weeks at this point. You know, when, when I'm making this video, I've been in Brazil over a month. Actually far over a month. Um, so yeah, you know, when you spend a lot of time here in Brazil and you look at the moths every day like I do and you study them, at some point you'll have seen all the common species and I think I see most of the common species right now. So I'm a bit disappointed nothing new showed up. I would have loved to see one of the giant hog moths I haven't seen yet, like from the genus of Cochetius. That would have been very nice. Or Neococetius. Or Copiopteryx. Or maybe some kind of Rosilia I haven't seen before. I mean, there's... I think there's like 80 species of Saturnid in the area, including many I haven't seen yet. So... Yeah, it's a mixed result. Today I really just got some of the most really common seasonal stuff right now, I suppose. But still I'm excited, you know. I'm excited to be here right now in Brazil. It just feels like I wish I could do this for the rest of my life, you know. I really do. It feels like I've been born to do this, you know. I'm grateful for you guys, it's because of you that it's possible. How my channel will become so successful or have so much support that I can just do a world tour and show you the nature in every country in the world. Well, every country is impossible. But I would love to see places like, well, the Amazon, you know, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia. Costa Rica also, that's not the Amazon. Even Australia, Papua, and also the United States. I would love to visit the United States. Imagine Bart Coppens in Florida, Bart Coppens in New York, Bart Coppens in Texas. That would be cool if I can get my channel to that point. But I have to work hard for it. Make a lot more videos, entertain people, grow my channel, produce more research, film more moths, you know. I would also love to visit Greece, France, these are countries I love, Spain. All of them have interesting and unique insects, so... I mean, the, the sky is the limit, you know, the world is full of insects, no one is filming, no one is documenting, and no one really has the time or the expertise to do that, so... It would be cool if I was the person to do that, you know. I would love to visit Taiwan, Vietnam, China, Thailand, Russia. Siberia has beautiful giant forest. The Russian Far East has swallowtails, you know that are special. How about Nepal or Bhutan? But I shouldn't complain. I'm already in Brazil, you know. I don't know if a travel like this is going to happen again in the future. I really hope so. I think it's a massive boost to my channel. And it's also a very important experience, you know. Nowadays, there's just a lot of people trying to be um, entomologist but just by sitting behind their computer and keeping insects as pets you know the people who are in Europe or the United States who think they are expert in insects because they breed them in captivity but they never really travel to research them in the wild that kind of experience is kind of useless if you ask me Like, sorry guys, sorry, 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 sorry. Maybe I sound a little bit bitter. Maybe I sound a little bit frustrated. But I noticed that there is a, especially on social media, 
so many people trying to establish themselves as an expert which by the way I'm not gatekeeping uh, I'm also a social media expert so it would be pretty hypocritical of me you know to call others out for being a social media expert while literally trying to earn a living from being a social media expert myself I mean that's what I'm doing I monetize my expertise on social media and so far it seems to be working but it would be hypocritical for me to speak out and say that these people are bad by default however I do think it's very strange uh, I don't think you are capable of, of, of understanding an animal that you've only kept in captivity you know if you don't see them in the wild like I know you guys watch my channel and I film a lot of moth life cycles in captivity and I educate people about their biology and show the life cycle on YouTube of these insects. But breeding moths alone is not going to give me true understanding. This stuff is giving me the real understanding of insects. This. This. This is the real experience this is the real entomology this is the real expertise with insect and you don't get this if you buy an insect online as a pet throw it in a plastic box complete a life cycle and then assert yourself as a i don't know maybe it's me that's just gatekeeping or complaining maybe i sound a little bit whiny like, who am I to tell what others should do, you know? It's not my place, I guess. I just like to rant. I just don't understand, though. I'm a little bit confused because there are so many people, at least, posturing as someone who really understands animals and biology. But, like, you don't... But they don't even leave their own country. Which is fine. You know, travel is expensive. Not everybody is privileged to travel. You need money and time and not everybody is privileged to have time and money to do something like this but still I don't get it you know they're like oh I know everything about uh, about mantids from South America but you've actually never been to South America like how how is that even possible sorry that's just not possible in my opinion if somebody is talking about experience my first question is okay have you studied in the field what is your experience what have you done if they cannot answer that question I will not trust their advice about insects anyway moving on just a little bit of rambling you know I like blah 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 let's do less blah 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 more insect Well, 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 for the most part our giant bees seem to have settled down. Although it's still a little bit suspicious of it. Pretty sure this thing can send you to a hospital. Okay, maybe it's not that dramatic, but still I am careful with tropical bees and wasp. Yo, I'm a bit scared. I have been stung recently and it hurts. So... Wow. Megalopige radiata is another one of those species of flannel moths that are common in South America. This one right here is endemic to Southeast Brazil in the states of Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Nice patterns. Oh man, the light just went out. Uh, well, I guess that's the end of my trap. Whoops. 
This is Bart Coppens. I'm in the middle of a rainforest in the complete and utter darkness because my light just went out for some reason. That's, uh, I think that's a good sign for me to skedaddle out of here. Um, good news is I have a flashlight. Well, actually, I just have a smartphone. And nowadays they're equipped with a flashlight. Otherwise, uh, it would have been very spooky to be here without a flashlight, to be honest. I don't know why the power went out. Maybe something is wrong with the light. I don't care. It's uh, almost five o'clock. I'm gonna head home. We've seen the insects and in a few hours the sun is coming up. I don't think anything else is gonna arrive anyway. That's interesting. So let's go back. Oh, the light just turned on. It's working again for some reason. At least it's working again. I'm still going to go out of here, however. I'm gonna go back. And now it's time to do some of the close-ups that we neglected to do earlier in the video. This is another species we encountered many times in my video. It's Adelo nevaya subangulata, I think. A very widespread species that is found from El Salvador to Costa Rica all the way down to Argentina and Brazil. Now this species we found so many times in my previous videos that today I will decide not to explain too much of their biology, otherwise I'm just repeating myself a lot. I've already told you about their biology like four times at this point. A fifth time feels too much. Just know that this is a super common one in the lowlands ultra super mega common, I see them almost every day. Watch some of my other moth trap videos and realize how common it is. However, I do have one cool update. I am rearing the caterpillars of this species in captivity! Yeah, with some luck we may be able to see the life cycle of this species on YouTube later, who knows? Even if common, I'm still interested in documenting the life cycles. Wow, when you send Bart Coppens himself to the rainforest in Brazil, he's going to show you some really awesome insects, including this Copaxa he found in the Atlantic rainforest. Let me tell you about the biology. Copaxa time, but what species? Well, I believe this could be Copaxa decasent. This species is found in southeastern Brazil, Argentina and Paraguay. They feed on plants from the laurel family, including but not limited to avocado, for example. And this right here is a male. And males seem to be very common at lower level elevations in southeastern Brazil. A beautiful silk moth for sure. I'd prefer to spot females, however, it would be interesting to raise some of these in captivity. This moth right here is a very cool tiger moth. Apistosia judas is a tiger moth found in Guatemala, Honduras, Brazil, Nicaragua and Panama. How cute, it has an orange thorax and metallic black wings. What a little silly willy. Wow, this is an ivory looking moth. Its name is Iridopsis validaria, one of the many small geometric moths here in the region. Found in Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Panama, Mexico and Guatemala. It's missing some skills on its back, but it's still beautiful. What a little cutie wootie. Hey, this is a small Saturnid moth, and I think its name is Periga Falcata, and it is found in southeastern Brazil and Uruguay. These cute and small Saturnid moths are somewhat common, but their taxonomy can be a mess, which makes it hard to identify them down to species level sometimes. 
Females appear to be quite rare. I exclusively find males. Hmm, interesting. Oh, look! It's Walker's moth, Soscceta grata. This tiny rabbit is found all over South America. La! But the life cycle of this species and its ecology, they remain a complete mystery. There's a lot we still have to figure out, people. Yeah, a lot. This weirdo is named Walter. Walter is another species I fail to identify. Honestly, what family of moths does it even belong to? I don't know. I am at a loss. In these moments, I appreciate some help from my viewers. Please, do you know what family this belongs to or do you know what species this is? Then please write a comment or send me an email. It would be much appreciated. I would like to find out the species for my research, but it's hard to identify it. Whoa, yes, this is a moth that mimics a wasp, and I think it's doing a good job. It's all about convincing the public. Kind of like how Elon Musk pretends to be an inventor and pro-free speech philanthropist instead of a scam artist that makes false promises and takes credit for other people's inventions just because he owns most shares of a company. It's a bit like how he owns an electric car company and talks about saving the environment but also sells his carbon credits to companies it haven't even met emissions goals. That was the only time ever that Tesla went into profit. Mimicry at its finest. Anyway, that's off topic. This beautiful tiger moth appears to be the species Isantrene incendiaria, incendiaria. The limited amount of data I can find online indicates that this species is mostly found in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, just making it another one of those endemic species found only in southeastern Brazil. Tiger moths in general are very good at mimicry, and a number of species of mimic, a uh, number of species of them mimic wasps, but also beetles or simply other toxic moths. I, for one, am very happy to find this species. And that's the end. Tropical rainforests in Brazil have so many species. Who knows what insects we are going to find next time? Shortly after that, I went back to the Netherlands. Bye, guys. Boom! That's it. That's it, babe. That's the end of the video. Hey, if you enjoyed it, go watch another one of my videos. That's all I want. If you like this video, watch video number two. You'll like it. I have more. I'm working on more. Watch more. Watch more videos. Yes. Thanks for watching and goodbye.